Okay, back again. Here we have the module. Let's get it a little bit closer. <laughs> Under no circumstances should any attempt be made to service this module. Do not touch this. <laughs> I don't think, well, saying that, Roberts may still uh, service these, I don't know. But uh, what I won't be doing is messing with any of the um, satins. All I'm literally going to be doing is uh, popping the transistors out, having a look at them, see if they can be um, salvaged. If not, I should be replacing them. I might replace them anyway because um, you, you can zap the tin whiskers and get a shot of them. Eventually they'll come back. If it's a radio you're getting rid of, you don't really want it coming back and biting you later. Anyway, let's turn them over, the module on the back, metal plate, the hole. And um, I definitely think someone's been in this one before because that hole should be a hole in that little piece of card as well. So somebody's definitely been at it. So let's whip the bottom cover on. That just clips on. You can see the little hole there. Right? So uh, it's either been put, put back backwards, but someone's definitely been in it. Let's whip that out. And here we have the back circuit board of the module. Don't if we can get in any closer. Let's see. There we are. So you must bear with me as well because I'm not some um, an electronics expert by any means. I'm pretty much self taught. Um had a bit of um the teaching with my radio amateurs exam. Uh, there's a lot of electronics to do with radios in there, but uh, certainly there was no mention of mallard modules. Anyway, there's two soldered pieces here. You need to unsolder this this end and this end. Very um, delicate board again, so you've got to be really careful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my solder sucker back on and we'll uh, suck those out. So, turn that back on, excuse the noise again. Let's wait till that warms back up. Yeah, once these tabs are unsoldered, it'll let us uh, lift this module right out. Fun. Turn my other one on there. I say this solar uh, remover is a useful tool. I say they're not mega expensive unless you buy a hacker or something something like that, one of the more professional ones. It does save a lot of time and a lot of burnt traces. Okay, let's uh, just keep that out, let's turn it again. See how that's looking. No, a little bit more. We're going to need to use a bit of braid on this as well because these. Um, Tabs are bent over and then soldered by the looks of it. Let's turn, pop that one off again. Let's get some better braid actually, that's horrible stuff. Various uh, different types here, that's a little bit big. 
Trouble is the rubbish one's about the right size. So stuff that's a bit better. So got my other iron back on now. I need to turn the temperature down on that one. We do not want 400 degrees going on this. Let's try it at 300 to start with. See this. You said I had my little uh, knife if I had back on actually. But... Of soda on that to get it going. Yet. No, we're not. Yes, we are. Okay, so that end's done. What I'll do is just put a bit of heat on that. As I say, I'm really cautious about um, losing traces on this. Last thing you want to do on an IF module is lose any traces. Still fighting. <laughs> we have it. We're in. Let's move this light back out of your way. <laughs> So the big reveal, <laughs> what is inside this monster module? What do we reckon? AF 114, 115, 116 or is it silicone? Here we go. Ta -da! Oh, look at that. Three AF 116s. Interesting. That is definitely the problem. Just let you uh, see that a little bit closer. Hopefully, you'll be able to see the. Uh, oh, a bit too close. Come back. Back, back, back. back. Oh, there we go. So, there we have it. Three AF 116s. I have got another one of these uh, modules actually which I bought um, as a spares and it's different, <laughs> it's different to this one, strange isn't it? I'll show you that one in a minute anyway but um, yeah this is all the little adjustment coils won't be touching those unless absolutely necessary doesn't look like there's anything else uh, amiss in there but yeah it's, uh, for those of you that may uh, want to have a go at one of these yourself, I'll just uh, put that in 
the camera view so you can see where the components go. There we are. Right, well, join me in a minute and uh, we'll get and have a look at these um, transistors. Welcome back to this um, module refurbishment marathon. Um, started off, I've got um, the pinout data for the existing AF116 um, <coughs> transistors. Uh, I wish, I'm assuming everybody has uh, seen the old um, Towers transistor book. Brilliant. Well worth buying a second hand one. Every transistor, well pretty much every transistor that's ever been made is in there somewhere together with its equivalents. Um, really, really worth buying that. Say so it, uh, It'll get you out of trouble a lot of times. Anyway, yeah, go back to my little diagram. This is the AF116 in the T07 um, T07 can. So you've basically got collector, shield, base and emitter in that order. What I've done is I've taken a photo of the um, back of the circuit board. And uh, what I've got on there basically is um, I've marked, it's probably difficult for you to see, but uh, you can certainly see that I've um, got the, uh, let's get my... Uh, Nightcap out of the way. <coughs> see if we can get you in a little bit closer. So you can see I've marked on my little photograph the position of the pins in relation to the back of the board because, as I say, <laughs> a little bit difference in size, but uh, well worth doing, honestly. And um, coming over to this side, again, I've got another transistor in this area. I've marked that in black type because it's a little bit lighter on the top end of the picture. And there's another transistor in this area. So that's the three transistors that we're going to get out. So bear with me, I'm going to pop the desoldering tool on, put it on a fairly low um, a fairly low power and uh, we'll get these transistors out and have a look at them. Right, as you can see, we can certainly hear that I've got the um, desoldering tool all fired up. Just make a little bit of a racket as we previously explained. Um, over here is my plan of what I'm going to do. And obviously the module here, so let's zoom in a little bit. And let's um, get taking some of this these transistors out. <coughs> I'm hoping I've got them all in the right order, otherwise we could be in trouble. Okay, the first one then. Let's have a look, I've got my diagram the right way round. Put it down, I've got a bit, so that is the... Just clean that off a little bit. Let's move some of my junk out of the way. <coughs> so we've got a V-shape coming down here, and that is the base just in there. Base, emitter right beside. Collector. And finally the shield. Hold on. What do you know? One transistor. <laughs> As I said, really effective little tool. Let's go with the next one then. That's, uh, let's go with this one next. Again, referring to my plan, we've got emitter, base, shield, and collector. Two down, one to go. This is easy, really. Not. <coughs> Last one, then. This little boy here. So 
Sorry about that, I just about to sneeze. I didn't want to put that on camera for you. I'm sure you won't appreciate that. So the last one. A bit of a tight grouping on this one as far as solar is concerned. So we've got collector. Shield. Base. There we have it. Three AF one one six transistors and a bare board. Well, not bare, but um, bare of transistors now. Anyway, so let's see if I can get you in a little bit closer on this. see that or not but some um, basically that's the pin out <coughs> collector is the first one then we've got our shield then I believe it's the base and the emitter so what happens is the shield wire is connected to the actual case of the transistor and over time little tiny what they call tin whiskers grow from the side of the can into the body of the of the um, transistor I keep trying to call them thermostats, the transistor and what that does is it creates a short between the other wires and the shield now <coughs> a quick fix is to just snip the um, shield off but that is a quick fix and um, it has been noted in some cases it can mess the alignment of the setup so anyway what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my um, bench bench uh, multimeter out here and uh, we'll have a look and see what we've got between the shield wire and the other terminals so bear with me and uh, I'll get set up for that Okay, welcome back. Um, I had a bit of a readjustment. Um, in the shot now, you can see my uh, Keith Lee uh, 175A auto ranging uh, bench multimeter. Quite a handy bit of kit. Um, didn't think it was faulty originally, but it seems to have um, rectified itself. It's a little bit random, but um, it's pretty accurate. And I've tested it against all my other multimeters, and it probably is the most accurate one I've got. So. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to connect a probe to the um, shield wire on the base of the transistor and then I'm going to probe the uh, collector, emitter and base in sequence and uh, we'll see if we've got any connection between them so uh, pretty interesting so let me first of all get you down to um, my workbench again and we'll have a look at um, what we're going to do If I can find it, here we are. Mm. So what I'm going to do is take the one at a time. Let's we'll have this one first. I'm going to connect the shield, which is the one next to the emitter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to probe each wire individually and see what we've got. So uh, I'll zoom you back now on onto the multimeter. So bear with me. Let's get find it. Where is it? Where have you gone, meter? There we are. So let's get you in a little bit closer there. There we are. Sorry, it's a little bit dark, but it's better to to see the display. <coughs> so. Currently connected to the shield wire of transistor number one. I'm going to go with the collector first. So this should still say OL. There should be no reading here really. Let's go with that.
So assume we've got a good connection on the meter. There's no collect no connection between the shield and the collector. That's good news. Let's move on to the next uh, wire. Which uh, let me have a quick look is the uh, base wire. Again, we don't seem to have a connection between the base and the shield. Good news. And last but not least, the emitter. Again, nothing. Just double check. Let me touch the top of the cam. Yeah, we've definitely got a short there. So really, that transistor, in theory, is good. So I'll put that one to one side as good. Just mark that. That's good. Next one then. Here we go again. Uh, connect the clamp lead. Let's get a good connection here. I don't want uh, any false readings. So again, collector. Oh, no. <laughs> Try again. Yeah, these are pretty big crop clips actually, not probably not the best to be testing them with. Just bear with me, I'll get a, a little uh, lead and go in between. A bit easier. transistor right okay so again we go shield to collector and now you'll see we have got a connection there actually that's um, quite high it's around about 30k so um, definitely got a short there let's also now try the base Again, it's a little bit wavering, but that's my connections probably. But as you can see, we have got a read in there. Around about 40k. And now we go to the emitter. Mm, not too bad there, 0.3 mega ohms. So Still, we have got a connection there, but um, very minute. Let's just go across the can again and uh, dead short. So that one is no good. What? Bad. And the final one. I will tr retry that um, first one again actually before I finish just to make double sure that my connection was okay the first time round. So again connect it up to the shield, go into the collector, well we have got quite, um, quite some short there, 37 <laughs> 37 ohms, yeah, that's definitely shot that one. So let's try the base. Again, 95, 70 ohms. This is probably the one that was causing the main problems. And onto the emitter, 81 ohms. So that is severely shot. So we've got good, bad, and really bad. Just double check that um, first one again. Now I've got a better um, terminal connection, just in case. Oh, yeah. Mm, no. No, 
No, that is a good transistor. No, surprisingly, one out of three. A one out of three ain't bad, look. So, uh, what uh, what I'm going to do is I, I will replace these transistors with um, a more modern uh, equivalent, the AF11. Sorry, AF127. So, a uh, very similar transistor, but in a different can altogether. Let me just show you um, the pinouts on those. As you can see, I've done a little uh, diagram there of my three transistors. Good, bad, very bad. <laughs> uh, this is the um, pinouts. You've got to be careful with this because um, although they're equivalents, <clears throat> and I did look in towers, and there's not a lot of difference between them, Different cans, that's a T07, that's a T072. Different layout, This one, the new ones have got a little tag on them. Again, I'm gonna be using an AF127. One's coming out are an AF116. Um, and luckily for me, I have got quite a few of these in different packages and guises. But um, basically, that's the transistor there. As you, you may be able to, may or may not be able to see. Let's get the light on there a bit better. There is uh, a little. Is it going to focus? Is it going to focus? Going to focus? Yeah, you can just about see. There is some. Um, a little tag there that pretty much tells you where you are. Four leads, but uh, you will notice. <coughs> let me pick that one up. Quite a difference in size. That's good in a way because I'll be able to um, mount the transistor with longer leads, which makes it easier to solder and easier to know w which leads what. But. Um, if, if you're replacing transistors in uh, an actual set where the transistors are on view, like some of the uh, hackers where you just open the back and some of the earlier Robert sets, then uh, it's nice to actually refurbish these. And I will show you in a second just uh, what you do to refurbish these. So bear with me and I'll get set up for that. See you in a minute. Right, hopefully you've got a good view of this. Um, What I'm doing now is, uh, let's just adjust the light a little bit, as I'm preparing this transistor for uh, zapping, I call it. <laughs> I'm sure uh, that's not the right word, but there you are. Anyway, uh, what you need to do first is you need to join the, the um, base, emitter and collector together with solder. So uh, I've got my soldering iron all heated up nicely. Tin the tip. Just got this in my third hand thing because you need about 50 hands to do this. Okay, that should be joined. Let's just have a check. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can see there, but. Um, What I've done, I've joined the base collector and emitter together and the shield wire is loose and separate. So next thing we need to do is connect a capacitor up to this. So I'm going to pop that back in my little third hand tool. Which uh, is playing up. Crocodile clips are not brilliant on this. The problem with these particular transistors is the leads, because they're in a module, they've cut them really short, pushed them right down to the board, so there's nothing really to get onto. So what I'll do is I'll connect the... Let me have a look, which one should I connect to that? I'm going to connect the negative lead of this. This is a um, just a standard. It's a 
100, 100 microfarad at 63 volt capacitor, normal standard electrolytic, so say 100 uh, microfarads, 63 volts. Long as it's above the the um, size of your power supply, not a problem. So what I'm going to do is just pop the negative lead onto the three terminal set. So there you have it. Let me just get that side on. Let's get that out of the way so it's not focusing on uh, nothing. Center there. Come on, focus. Is it going to focus? Yeah, there we are. So basically, three leads connected together onto the negative side of the um, electrolytic doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative but um, you need to just <laughs> make sure when you connect that power supply that your polarity is right trust me I've done it it goes bang if you connect them the wrong way round it will go bang so the idea now is that we actually charge the capacitor and then just touch the lead onto the shield and what that'll do is that'll pass current through it and in theory it'll burn off all the little uh, hairs that are formed inside that metal can. All the little tin whiskers will get zapped off. Now it's unknown how long this process will prolong the life of these but um, what I'll do is I will refurb all three of these because I've got no AF116s in stock at all. I've got 114s, 115s and 117s, 118s, no no 116s, so uh, I should keep these in stock and if I get a radio with them uh, gone then I should replace them with these and uh, refurbish the other ones. So uh, bear with me, I'll get the power supply set up and uh, we'll go through the next bit. Now unfortunately you can't see the power supply and the bench at the same time, Let me just pop the power on there for a minute. So I've got it um, ganged together. So you've got 17 volts each channel, that's going to be 34 volts out DC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass that voltage through. I've got current limiting on this um, power supply as well, so nothing untoward is going to happen. If it overcurrents it will just cut off anyway, um, so no problems there. So let's turn that off, I'll get you down to the bench and um, show you what that looks like. Okay, zapping time. So. Um, We've got the negative side of the electrolytic there, so we need to make sure that's connected to the black lead. Again, the power supply is off at the moment. And the red one to the positive. So the idea is... Let's get this up on the bench. Ooh. Uh, incidentally, this is the very bad capacitor, so we know that... the Sorry, capacitor. This is the very bad electrolytic, so we know this one has had it. Electrolytic transistor. So uh, this will be a good test. If it clears this one then uh, we'll be we'll be quizzing on the others but uh, I'll do this one anyway. The others I'll do off, off camera and as I say they'll just be in my uh, spares box for later. So let's pop the um, power supply on. So what that's doing now is that's charging that capacitor up to 34 volts. And then what I tend to do is just gently move it in. See if I can get this out on camera, I doubt it. So there wasn't really a snick or anything there, but I'm now connected. See that capacitor is charged up to 34 volts. There's no current limiting going on. Leave that on for a second. Off. Yeah, I can't hear or see any spark in there. So let's pop that power supply off. And uh, what you've got to be careful of is uh, <laughs> that capacitor is still charged. So be careful. Let me just show you. You can just uh, get it to. He says. <clears throat> oh, 
So let me try that again. It didn't seem to have uh, charged up that. Might be a bit um, dirty leads, maybe. I have used this capacitor quite a few times. Let's try that again. I'll come across. There we are, touch in. Off again. Power off. There we are. I don't know if you heard that or not on camera. So the next trick, and uh, this is courtesy of uh, a chap called Mark Hennessy, who has got an excellent um, blog, if you look him up. Also, he contributes to the um, Hacker and uh, Roberts forums. Uh, and what he uh, suggested is to remove, totally remove the tin whiskers. It's uh, possibly a good idea to give it a good beating as well. <laughs> so uh, I can see his point because um, the idea is to put this under load now with a, a current on it and uh, give it a good few taps and see uh, just to, to make doubly sure that all those little tin whiskers are absolutely gone. So to do that we need to connect that permanently. Gone. So now what we have is we have the base collector and emitter all joined together onto the negative side of the electrolytic and we have the shield joined to the positive. So what I'm going to do is pop that back on the power supply. Hopefully this won't go bang as so that will be a little bit embarrassing. Pop that back on. And uh, what I tend to do now is I get a fairly heavy screwdriver. Careful not to hit the wires on this, by the way. Let me just make sure we can see that. Just give it a... As you do it, you may hear the power supply kick in as more of the little bits are zapped out. Try and go all the way around the transistor and do this. So do it on the edge of the bed as well, just to get the sides. But say be careful or use a, a non-conductive implement. Again, no dips in the uh, current there, so I think that's probably a goer. So again, disconnect it. I like to discharge it again. Make sure there's no, nothing there. So let's pop it off. Come on. Did too good a job of joining these together, I think. Okay, I'll just uh, get you back in the picture with the multimeter and we'll put this one under test again, see if it's cured out. Okay, we're back uh, with our zapped transistor now. Let's put that back up there. So again, I've got my um, negative wire on the shield. So, collector. Let me just get you uh, up onto the... Uh, 
zoomed in on the multimeter. Come on, zoom, 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 zoom. No, yes, no. It's got mind of its own this camera sometimes. There we are. Okie doke. Right, so OL means absolutely open circuit, no connection. Let's go then from the shield to the collector. Nothing. Shield to the base. Nothing. And shield to the emitter. Nothing. Just to test it, I'm going to go shield to the case of the can. And there we have a short. So that transistor is, in theory, fixed. So it's gone from being really bad in the ohms, not kilo ohms, mega ohms, actual ohms, so pretty much a short circuit to usable again. So uh, there we have it. That is how you refurb the old AF11, it's half off short there, but yeah, that's how you refurb the, um, well, it's, um, it's basically a quick fix. Um, it's not as good, obviously, as replacing the transistor, but you've got to bear in mind these old transistors. I mean, I've got some, um, I've got boxes of them, oh, yeah, look, which are, uh, when I've got some um, F one one five there, sealed in a bag. Um, probably fifty percent of those would be no good. I've got AF one one sevens. Again, some of these I've taken out and sorted. Some are new old stock AF one one fours. Look, so yeah. The uh, difference between those and the other transistors which I'm going to replace them with these is that um, these didn't suffer from that tin whiskers for some reason. Whether the actual metals were different, I don't know, but um, no, not a problem with these. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll be back soldering new transistors in my lovely AF, sorry, LP1171 module. See you in a minute. Welcome back. So again, I've got my uh, plan here of the base of the module. Here is the beastie. Make sure I've got the right orient orientation, which is there. So my new transistors. Three brand new, never used AF127s. Starting to get pricey these now. Um, and difficult to get hold of. Um, I haven't really found anyone selling them in, in, in multiples but I did buy some of these in multiples of fives and tens. If you can get them like that then uh, you can get some good deals but individually they're, um, they're quite expensive. So what I'm looking at again is the pinout. So I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Let's uh, just get you in a little bit closer now. So what I need to do is make sure that um, when I'm putting these in that I've got the correct orientation for them. So let's uh, pop our first one in. So I've got base on the right. Again these are difficult because they are totally wrong. So the base is there, my collector's got to come up here. My shield wire it's got to come over there so they're crossing over really and then my emitter wire so let's see if I can put this in the module this is where you need your wits about you really so base is going in that hole there No, that's the wrong hole straight away. So let's try again. Base. I'm sure that definitely is a base. Yes, base. Next we have the 
Next to the base on that is the emitter, which is the next one down. God, dear, oh dear, emitter. So there we have two wires through. <laughs> now, let me see which wire I am now, so that the transistors totally turn around. So the next wire up is the shield, and that goes to the very bottom connection, which I believe is that one. Let me just have a look at that. No, wrong one. That's the collector hole. Yeah, by the time you get these in, they're pretty twisted. You just got to be very careful. You don't short the leads out on these. There we are. In. So, let me double check here. Check and check again before you solder these in, because you do not want to be pulling this module back out again. This has got to be bang on first time. There's no um, no second chances with this one. So base there, that's correct. Where are we? Base here, yeah. shield. That should be the shield there. There we are, two wrong straight away. <laughs> Dear. This could take a while. So let's start again. Let's pop them out and start again. So, base is that one. That is the base, and that has got to go that top hole there. Base to the top hole. There, that's correct. Emitter. Let's find the emitter. Which is down from the base opposite, so that's that one. The emitter has got to go to the right. Double check that. So you've got to have some patience to do this job. So there's base and emitter in the correct places. So we've only got collector and shield. These are the two that cross over unfortunately. So the collector <laughs> This is great. Next one's got to go over to the far hole. Down there. Come on. There you go. You know you want to. And then the shield. We Back in again. God dear, oh dear. Right, let's double check again. So we've got... Base. Yes. Shield. Yes. Yes. We are in business. As you can see from the board, that um, is pretty small compared to the original. You can see that there. Miniaturisation, eh? Right. Uh, make sure none of the leads are short in. I'll leave that rests on the paper to hold it in place. Um, better in the shot for you. There we are. So, let's 
so I've got my iron set down and I'm going to set it down to 350. Might even still be a little bit hot, but um, I'm not going to be on there for long, to be fair. What I actually will do on this is I'm going to pop a little bit of um, flux in there as well, just to make sure these joints all go to plan. This is a no clean flux, so I used to think that meant you don't have to clean the joints up, but it means you don't have to clean the board after you finish. So I'm only putting a little tiny dash on. This is pretty sticky stuff as well, so um worth bearing in mind, I've got my little cut off, tin the tip, clean it off. What I'll do for this is I'll put my uh, glasses on to save messing your picture up. Put the old narrow glasses on. Gets me a little bit closer in. Again, you've got to be so careful you don't spend too much uh, time heating this board because these traces are fragile. Right, yeah, they flowed perfectly well. Brilliant. You're pretty close anyway, I don't think I can get you any closer, but um, uh, then we have the new transistor in, looking good. So I won't bore you with the other two, I'll pop them in and then we'll put this module back together. Join me soon. There we have it, all uh, all three are in now, I don't know uh, if you can see them. Just, uh, this white background you might be able to see a little bit better. You can see the uh, leads sticking out of the uh, transistors that I've soldered in. I'm going to trim those off now and um, get the uh, cam back on the top. So you have a look at the uh, difference. So there we are, all uh, soldered up. Three new AF127s, one here, one here and one here. Um, I will just quickly use some flux cleaner to clean off that flux, I don't like leaving flux on there, even though it says it's no clean, I'm going to get rid of it anyway. So uh, I'm going to put the cam back on and um, join me in a second for a reassembled uh, LP1171 module. Right, there he is, back together. Uh, all soldered back on, all present and correct, cleaned all the flux residue off with, um, I use this uh, stuff here, flu, <laughs> flux clean basically, and um, I clean off with that, it's got a little brush on it anyway, but I always give it a go with a old toothbrush, spray a bit of um, isopropyl on it, and uh, comes up good as new. I mean, really, I can't, I can't see where I've changed those transistors, which is exactly how it should be. No big blobs of solder. I've also cleaned up the um, pins with some uh, braid, solder braid. Well, straight away, I'm quite straightened them up yet, but. Um, all we've got to do now really is put the little piece of um, paper back in, or card, I'm not sure what this stuff is, but uh, it's obviously there for a reason. What we'll do is make sure it lines up with the hole this time. If I remember rightly, there's a little hole in the uh, PCB there. It all lines up with that. So. Well, I am glad that is done. 
There we are, one refurbished LP1171. Join me again soon and um, we'll get this back in the set and uh, I'll show you some of the other things that I've found uh, that are a little bit of an issue with this set. Anyway, uh, hopefully that'll get us back on long wave and medium wave. See you again soon.